Hello, welcome back to the garage. I'm Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. We come here every Tuesday and Thursday and we talk about golf cart related issues and maybe answer a few questions, maybe interact with some people in the live. Anybody in the live watching, feel free to comment, feel free to ask a question, feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to do anything you would like. All right, let's see. This is Tuesday, the 20th, and we got a list of questions here to talk about and maybe we'll get some more in the live so let's get started with the regular questions question number one I have a 1990 easy go TXT I have replaced the FNR switch and potentiometer it goes in forward but not in reverse my question is could the FNR switch be bad History. The last owner had a no movement issue, took it to a shop, and they replaced the controller uh, with a Curtis and a solenoid. It still doesn't work. Well, to answer your question, yes, that uh, the FNR switch could be bad. Uh, it's a mechanical switch. So it's, it's actually very simple. If you'll look at it, you might be able to figure out if there's something wrong with it or not. Uh, it, when you when you twist it to go into forward the contacts need to line up you know to go into the forward position and when you twist it to go in reverse the contacts need to line up on, on some different contacts so look at that real close and see if you're getting any arcing or any kind of damage to the copper contacts at the, the the twisting part also there are a couple of micro switches on there that you could have one of those that's going out that, that could be causing your your no forward or no reverse issue that you're having so yes, the answer to your question is it definitely could be the forward and reverse switch. Let's see here. Number two. Number two. So I have a Yamaha G2 that backfires. What parts do you have to fix it? Well, it just really depends on what's causing the backfire, but most likely it's going to be a carburetor issue and you could get a new carburetor to, to it, or you could just rebuild your, your existing one, or maybe just unstick your needle, your float, your needle. A lot of times a backfire is caused by a, a stuck needle and seat in the float bowl and it's allowing gas to continue to go past the carburetor even after you let your, your foot off and then gas gets in there and then you put your foot back on and it ignites that fuel so it could be that but most likely that's what it is most likely it's going to be a carburetor issue number three my batteries get hot well my question would be uh, would be how hot is hot I mean are they getting hot to the point where you can't touch them because uh, but the, as batteries get older when, when they get older toward the end of their life they may get warm because they resist taking a charge There's, batteries can die in many different ways and but that's one of them they resist taking a charge and that charger is trying to charge them and it force is trying to force voltage into the battery the battery is holding back because it's, it's old and it's, uh, it's sulfated on the inside and it holds back and it ends up getting warm and maybe even get to the point where it gets hot. So if they're toward the end of their life, then yeah, that, that could be the case. Another reason the batteries can get hot or get warm is if they're really, really dead and your charger is trying to really, really hard, trying to work really hard in order to charge them. So anyway, check is your, my question would be, I would need some voltage readings to see what's going on. When the batteries are hot, I'd like to see some volt readings on there. And I'd like to know if your charger's getting hot. And if your charger's getting hot, I'm a big advocate for putting a fan on a charger when it's charging a dead battery pack. So put a, one of those, I call them squirrel case fans, those kind that move a lot of air. Force one of those right on the charger if your charger's getting hot. Let's see here, that was number three. I'm going to check number four. Number four is Easy Go Series DCS 36 volt solenoid wiring. Okay, I'll 
we'll go back and talk about this. There's already been a mistake here because there's some, there's some wording that's not correct so far. My wiring diagram from the internet shows the main positive battery cable to one of the large terminals and B plus from the controller to the other large terminal. That puts positive connection to both sides of the solenoid. Does that sound right? It's a 2000 TXT series DCS. Okay. A DC, an easy go DCS, okay, is not a series cart. It is series when you, a lot of people get confused when that, when that word gets thrown around. The word series, when they're talking about golf carts, they are referring to the electrical system and the way that the motor is wound. Uh, a DCS is not considered a series cart. It is what is called a shunt wound cart. The motor is wound completely different than a series motor would be. So I just want to clear that up first because if when you say series and DCS in the same sentence, it's 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 uh they don't go, it doesn't go together. Now let's go back to your other part of your question. Uh, from what you're describing there, you says the cable, the positive cable to one of the large terminals on the solenoid, that is correct, and B plus from controller to the other large terminal, that is correct. That puts positive connection to both sides of the solenoid. Does that sound right? The answer to that question is yes, that does sound right. Now, this is another thing. A lot of people don't realize what a solenoid is actually doing. The solenoid is actually just an, a middleman for that one wire that goes from your battery positive all the way up to your controller positive. The solenoid, all it does is break the connection in that one wire. So it's a positive wire. It's a it's B plus. It's a B plus wire from battery positive to B plus on the controller. So all the solenoid does when it disconnects is just disconnect that wire, and then it puts it back together. That's it. When you know when it when it's activated. <clears throat> Let me check over here. It doesn't look like uh, any questions there. Okay, now we're on number five. My easy go cart battery gauge indicates a charge is required, but when I plug the charger in, it indicates a full charge is present. Any ideas? Well, that's just a, that's just an example of why I don't like it when my customers would pay attention to those battery gauges on their dash. I, I don't don't pay too much attention to it. You know, use it as a reference, I guess, but it, they're notoriously inaccurate. And the first thing you, that I'm going to want when you talk to me about a battery gauge is that I'm going to want actual readings off of the batteries themselves with a voltmeter. So, uh, and also, how does your, when you, you say you plug your charger in and it, how does your, what kind of charger do you have that it already indicates that a charge is present? I'd like to have some, I'd have some questions about that, some specific questions about that. But the main thing is, I'd like to see what your battery readings are. All right, let's see here. Number six. I have eight volt batteries. They charge up, but under load, they drop to 7.6 and some lower. Would the Epsom salt revive work for them? Uh, I've never been very successful with any of those battery revision techniques. Now, it doesn't hurt anything to try, it, and it's not very expensive to try. Uh, so give it a shot and see what you get. But also, you said it drops to 7.6 under load. By the way, that's, that's not that bad. That's not that bad of a drop. You're going to get drop under load, even on brand new batteries, there's going to be a drop under load. So if you're going from 8.3 to 7.6 under load, that's not that bad. I'd like to know, you said that your other batteries were dropping a little further. I'd like to know how much further those are dropping. But if, uh, if you find somebody that has done the Epsom salt thing and, it, and they've had good luck with it, then by all means, give it a shot. Because like I said, it doesn't hurt to try. I've never had any good, I've never had good luck with it. Number seven, 1988 club car that moves too slow and then dies. Any ideas as to what be what could, may be causing this? Uh, 
Well, if it was just too slow, then I would have one question or a few questions about your solenoids because that car's got a bunch of solenoids in it. But the fact that it's too slow and then dies makes me want to ask about your batteries. Uh, makes me want to have readings on your batteries because uh, that could one battery could cause you the exact symptom that you're describing there. It could it could be that it drives real slow and then all of a sudden it dies. Could just be one cell and one battery that causes that. So I would want I'd want battery readings off each one of your batteries, especially when it dies. When it dies, what you're looking for is you're looking for one battery that's a lot lower than the others. You don't have to disconnect anything to test your your batteries individually with a voltmeter. You don't have to disconnect any of your battery wires to, to check voltage on your batteries individually. Uh, so just go through, when it dies, go through each one of your batteries and what you're looking for is one of your batteries a lot lower voltage than the others. Let's just say that you have, in that car, is a 36 volt car, so you've got six six volt batteries, I'm assuming. Uh, you're looking for batteries, all of them, them should be around 6.0 or greater. If you find one that's that's like 4.0 or greater, right in that range, then that's going to be the one that's dropping out. All right. That was number seven. So now we're on number eight. Or was that number eight? No, that was number seven. All right, we're good. Number eight, we have a club car precedent 2016. It has six batteries, lead acid, eight volts. It's got six eight volts, all right. The charger is a three prong. Water levels are indicating on the battery that they are full. The charger states a full charge, but when driving, it dies after a few minutes. Indicating on the batteries are full. Water levels are indicating on the battery. The battery states. The charger states the full charge. Well, it's going to be the same thing. Something is causing it to die, and the only way to verify that it's a full charge is I need to have some battery readings. That's the only way that I can be sure, you know, that your charger, that, that would tell me that your charger is working correctly. You know, uh, another thing that I would want to see is I'd want to see what your battery pack voltage is with your car sitting there at rest without the charger plugged in. Then I want you to plug the charger in and then tell me what's happening with, with the volts. And when the charger starts running, I, I would want to see that. That's, that verifies all kinds of things with me. That verifies that your charging cycle is happening and that it, I'm, I'm going to assume that way that it's, be, it's complete. Then after that, we're going to do a load test on each one of your batteries. Or when your car fails, we're going to check your batteries for one of them that's dropped out, just like the last question. Because uh, uh, it's very likely that one of your batteries is dropping out. Uh, it's easy to find one. It's easiest to find a battery that's dropped out uh, when your car has failed. You know, when when it's when it's dies, that's the best time to look for one with a voltmeter. All right, check for some questions there. Don't have any. Check something right here. All right, number nine, is that where we're at? Yeah, number nine. I just purchased this golf cart. It looks like they added a 10 LOL LED light kit. The problem I'm having is the passenger turn signal will automatically turn on when cart is at rest. The turn signal is in neutral position. This will stay on all the time, draining my batteries. I have disconnected it in the meantime. Well, obviously there's something wrong with the with the switch mechanism. You know, this, this in the in the blinker section. Uh, we don't sell that particular light kit. I know which one you're talking about. But we we don't have that particular light kit. But from my experience with the light kits that we do sell, that something is hung up and and your blinker's always on and you can't turn it off even by putting it in a neutral position. Now. This is a good example. I mean, I know I know those are very very inexpensive light kits, like the the one that you have there. So this is a good example when something is priced pretty low, really low, you know, like a whole lot lower than some of the other competition. You might want to. You, sometimes you need to be weary. You know, ask yourself how could it possibly be that much lower in price? Well, 
I take phone calls all day that from people that have ordered some of the very inexpensive parts from Amazon and YouTube. I mean, from a and from a mainly Amazon and eBay, and a lot of a lot of horror stories of, of parts uh, being brand new and just being defective, and they and they're very very inexpensive parts. So, anytime something's priced low, you might all ask yourself why, you know, before you decide to do it. You might get lucky and get away with it. You might fix your problem and you might get off cheap, but not always. I can tell you, not always. Does not that does not always happen. All right, let's see here. Looks like we're good there. Last regular question. I have a 2018 EasyGo TXT. When I go uphill, it slows down a lot and almost completely stops. I think it's the controller. What do you think? Well, I can tell you, it could be. Look, uh, I've talked about this before. I've talked about uh, controllers going into thermal shutdown. Like, uh, happens more likely to happen on a lifted car, but it can happen on a non-lifted car too. Uh, when the controllers, the, the quickest way to heat up a controller, a lot of people don't understand this part either. The quickest way to heat up a controller is to drive the car slow, believe it or not. You drive around real slow, in grassy terrain or on a golf course, you know, and uh, there's there's no air flowing, and you're and you're you're putting that controller in just a little bit of a bind, and it's actually better. A golf cart is designed to go wide open, and everything free flows, you know. It it it, uh, it, it actually runs cooler that way. If you drive a golf cart around real slow for too long, that th that that controller will start heating up, and once it gets to a certain temperature, it can go into thermal shutdown. Now, the way that that feels. To the operator while they're driving that feels exactly like your batteries went dead so a lot of people would come to me and they would say i don't know my batteries go dead after a certain amount of time and you know at the deer lease or on the trail so uh and what it turns out to be is that the controller is getting weak and the controller is getting overworked so it could be one of those two things and we can eliminate batteries like we had talked about before uh, by putting voltmeter on it at the time of failure, you know, and see if you find something that's dropped out. If that's not it, feel for heat around your controller because it could be that could be getting hot. All right, I'm going to run the giveaway uh, coupon code while I recognize Travis Lee. Travis Lee says thank you again for your help each week. You're quite welcome, Travis Lee. How's it going, man? And Cat Free 83, great job. Thank you, Cat Free. There's the coupon code. You get 5% off any parts you order if you use coupon code TIM6 at checkout at golfcartgarage.com. This code expires on January the 8th, 2022. So make sure to use that code at checkout to get 5% off. Let's see, and January 8th, it'll be here before you know it. So get your parts in, get your parts ordered between now and Christmas. Let's see, thank you for putting all these videos here Saves us a lot of money going to service facilities and ordering unnecessary or the incorrect parts. Well, thank you. You are correct. That's what we're trying to do. So thank you for commenting. Let me check Facebook here. See what we got. Well, looks like we're okay there. Looks like we're okay. All right, I'm going to stop the coupon code. And I'm going to give this week's tip because that was the last regular question. I think I've already given it, but I'll give it again. Uh, I, get, I gave it in one of the questions, in one of my answers to one of the questions. This week's tip is if the price of a part that you're looking at is too low, is not too low, but if it's way lower than everything else that you find on the internet, you need to be weary. Not saying not to buy it, not saying don't try to save some money when you can, because you might be lucky and you might get away with it. But like I said earlier, I talk to people all the time that did not get so lucky and they're not real happy about it. And it's because they, you know, they went for the cheaper price, the really cheaper price. So anyway, that's this week's tip. Let's see. Looks like that's going to be it for me. Today is Tuesday and to, today's Tuesday the 20th. This was episode 81. We will be back on Thursday if I check and I don't see any other questions. That, that we're, we're going to be back on Thursday. So the 
I will see everybody Thursday. The garage is now closed.